both of them are coming to a theater and an economy near you. Yeah, yeah. Here's the latest news. Some of the largest commercial property owners, largest commercial property owners are defaulting on debts and giving up buildings that are upside down because, quote, it makes good business sense. Mr. Vice President, when the best business decision available is to default on your business property, is that the right direction? And how about home sales? I love this. You pull in on this. I want to show you this. Show the chart first. Can you bring the chart up? Show the chart. Do you have it? There it is. Okay, that's the chart. Existing home sales. Now, let me show you. Bring it on this chart. Let me show you this. Here is um, here's the chart. This is the top of the market when everybody was like, that evil George Bush, I bought too much of a house. Okay, right up here. Started to fall. Here's where the buyer home tax credit starts in this box. And here we are today. Now, what everybody's saying is, hey, this is, this is only happening because we stopped giving people money. Right. Let me just show you something that maybe somebody in the media should point out. Huh. You see what happened? This didn't affect anything. It's a straight line. It's a straight line. This is all bogus. It didn't kickstart the economy. It's a straight line down. Let me show you this. Previously owned homes fell 27.2% from June. Largest drop, not since George W. Bush, not since the first George Bush, but since Lyndon B. Johnson. Now, the media, what are they doing? Oh, it's, we got to get the home buyer tax credit back in there. Give, in other words, give Americans more money. No, no, that's not what should happen. I showed you this chart um, a while back, and this is just made up. But basically, this is what we're looking at. This is all the stimulus money and all the tax dollars that we don't have and we've borrowed to keep our spending, to keep our economy up at this line. And the farther we go down, the more money we have to print and borrow. This is the stimulus package, what I just showed you. It just started to come up a little bit, but it was bogus because the straight line. You got it? This is bogus. Now, at some point, at some point, if it doesn't re-kick, because remember, we're here now, what do you do? You have to print and borrow more money and more money and more money. If the government continues to spend the money, and the government continues, quite honestly, to lie to you and not warn you of what's coming, gang, trouble is coming. If they don't warn you, what happens? People will be unprepared. People will be frightened. People won't know who to believe. And the government will have zero left as well. There will be nothing left at the end of this strategy. This is not a strategy. This is a suicide course. What, they're, what, what are they saving? What is the last bullet that we have to put in the gun? If they're wrong, what is the last bullet? And it's, I mean, this is a microcosm of what's happening with the entire economy. There are no injections left, no amount of bailouts that can turn the ship around, as Joe Biden just said. You've got to let, the hit, let it hit bottom and start over again and start trusting in the American people that we can handle it ourselves and we can take care of each other. Our economic day of reckoning is coming. And there will be pain. There will be lots of pain. But we are throwing bad money after bad money. And in the end, it's only going to make much, much more pain. It's like saying, no, I don't have cancer. No, I don't have cancer. No, I don't have cancer. At some point, you've got to go in and get the cancer. You've got to deal with it. And the longer you wait, the bigger chance you have of dying. Now, I don't know which economy Joe Biden is looking at, but this one's definitely not headed in the right direction. Unless, of course, you're from the Cloward and Piven School of Economics, and you think this is the right direction. <sighs> collapse, gang, collapse. Why? Why would you want to collapse? This is what people ask me. Well, that's ridiculous. Why would they want collapse? Because they don't believe in the system in the first place. And so it's a chance to start all over. They have a new one waiting. I told you on this program about structure that was being created. It's the final phase of the Cloward-Piven strategy, which has collapsed the system. 
when you collapse the system, what are you going to run to? Well, Cloward and Piven, they figured it out that you have to have the structure in place. You have to have something that the system collapses into, and that's what we're building right now. Look, gang, this is all about power. Do you know who's taking money out of the stock market? Who's taking that off-ramp right now? George Soros. Wait a minute. You mean the guy who's, yeah, the guy who's issuing these statements on me? Yeah, George Soros. The fund management reduced its $25 billion in equity investments to $8.8 .8 in March and then down to $5.1 billion at the end of June. Why? He's getting out of the market because he knows. Experts are saying that they believe he is shifting his money towards government bonds. Gee, what do you think? Maybe to be liquid. This guy doesn't care about people or countries, just money and power. He didn't care when he famously profited off of England's misery. He won't care when our day of reckoning comes because he'll profit on that as well. He and his family will be going to Singapore. Well, can your family go to Singapore? Make no mistake, the day is coming and we must stick together and rely on the truth. America, I want you to know that I'm, I'm talking to you about some, some crazy scenarios. They're, they, they are. They're nuts. They're crazy scenarios. But someone must. If you, can't, if you can't bring yourself to think that things will get ugly if the economy thinks what, if the economy does what I think, think it will do, um, you need to. And you need to get your neighbor's head out of the sand as well. Take a look at Greece. I mean, they're burning cars in the streets and riding because entitlements are being cut. Do you think we're any different, really? Fundamentally, people are people. Oh, this is America. We never let things get out of control. Are you kidding me? Have you seen what this country, what we're doing with spending? And it's not about Obama, it's about all of them. We've been on this course for a long time. I would like someone to explain to me how all of this ends well in Oakland, in Tulsa, and Norton, Massachusetts, to be specific. From USA Today, quote, budget cuts are forcing police around the country to stop responding to fraud, burglary, and theft calls. Really? Really? So what do you think is going to happen to those crimes? This is where we go first? What, not the, well, how much did that school cost in California? We don't cut that one. We go right to the police. Yeah, it looks like we're going to have to make budget cuts. Well, there goes the homicide department. Are you kidding me? Yeah, and all the judges. we got to cut a few teachers, too. All the courts. Yeah. You can't find anything else. Nothing. How about, here's an idea. How about we stop trying to green our cities? Seems like something that, you know, you might cut if you're a homeowner. You're like, hey, you know what? We don't have any food on the table. Let's stop replacing the light bulbs. You can cut the cops. But not first. How about last? Oakland? The Oakland police spokeswoman, uh, Holly Joshi, warned citizens that, quote, if you come home to find your house burglarized and you call, we're not coming. Oh, they're not coming. Wow. So in other words, if I come home and I've discovered that my house has been broken into in the middle of the night, I just walk in. I have no idea if it's safe to reenter or anything else. Oh, what would be really great is if I didn't have a right to have a gun either, because then I could just walk in unarmed to my house in the middle of the night, and I know the police aren't coming. That's what I like to call fear. They accuse me of fear-mongering. That's fear, America. And that's why the Second Amendment is more important than ever. Your right to own a gun. If it is taken away, like it is in Oakland, California, who's got the guns? Oh, yeah, that's right, the bad guys, who the police aren't going to come if they break into your house. We cannot break out into the Wild West. It doesn't mean go get your gun. i got to defend every It doesn't mean that. It means you have a right to defend yourself. And if the bad guys know the police aren't coming, does it make it less dangerous or more dangerous for you? The average person, I don't think, it, the average person doesn't look at this. And they don't understand how chaos works for radicals. It doesn't make sense to the average person to have chaos, but it does to radicals. This is happening in Oakland, the home of militant communist Van Jones and his organization Cop Watch. Radicals like Jones and Ayers are always against, quote, the pigs, as they call them. They need the unrest. They want the unrest. They want you to be afraid and have somebody to blame it on. Why? Go back to Cloward and Piven. When chaos breaks out, people will look for anyone with an answer. 
anyone who will say, I can feed you, I can protect you, I can make the madness stop. All they need are people that are frightened. If you don't have food, if you don't have money, and you don't have a way to protect yourself, who's going to do those things for you? They're succeeding in frightening people in Oakland, Tulsa, and Norton, Mass. Let's keep an eye on the seeds that are being planted. We have um, um, uh, a really great remaining uh, few minutes together. We're here in Washington, D.C. on Saturday. I'm going to be right there, and you can see this is a shot of the Lincoln Memorial. You'll see where they are building the Restoring Honor. Those are, for, those are two of the video towers over there. They're building the stage in front. It is quite amazing. Um, make sure you're here Saturday. Bring your kids. Come as you are. Leave your signs at home. Come as you are and leave stronger. The American people continue to reject the policies and ideology of Barack Obama in larger and larger number, and the media continues to belittle anyone who has that opinion. The more we learn of President Obama, the less we like what we see. For every poll that shows American people growing confusion over his back background or his muddled spirituality or his loyalties or his policies, the mainstream press shifts into high gear to assign evil motivations like racism or bigotry, or, or they just write them off as stupid. Well, we've been trying to dig a little deeper, knowing that there are legitimate concerns that are totally being ignored. There are also stupid, bigoted people in America. But that, I believe, is the minority. Is there anyone, anyone in the media, who is at the least bit intellectually curious on what's happening in America? How is it that after America, America elected a black man president of the United States, a great and glorious day, it was a good day for all of us when that happened. But all of a sudden, the same people who voted for him, because he wasn't just elected by black men, all of a sudden, the same country that put him into office now hates him because he's black. That doesn't make any sense whatsoever. If you want to make the case that we elected him in the first place without virtually knowing anything about him, I'm with you. But now to say that any and all opposition to him is based solely on racism, bigotry, and hatred defies all logic and reason. But that hasn't stopped the press. Look at this from The Guardian now. Quote, what we are witnessing at the moment is the full, ugly furor of white backlash aimed directly and indirectly at your first black president. Minor issues, including ACORN, a heretofore obscure agency that helped register urban, mostly minority voters, became cause celeb. A little-known African-American bureaucrat, Van Jones, was hounded out of office for allegedly expressing offensive views about the terrorist attacks of September 11, 2001. Views he later said he never voiced and did not hold. Really, Van? You going to play that game? Protesters spat upon and directed racial epithets at African-American congressmen as the health care debate reached its climate. Okay, well, let's, let's take these one at a time. First of all, minor issues like fraudulent voter registration. That's a minor issue. Or the green job czar. He was just, I love it. And he was hounded out of office because of his views on 9-11. You've got to be kidding me. The man is a communist, a communist revolutionary. Read his own works. You gotta be kidding me. The 9-11 thing, when they finally fired him and that was it, I was like, you gotta be on that?